Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So I am doing pick a card readings again and I've really started enjoying doing them and uh, this one is using tarot cards. I have five tarot decks here and we're asking the question, what is my guided path going forward? What is the direction I should take and how am I guided to go ahead as we go ahead now and you can place your own time frame on it in the next weeks or in the next months or in the next years or in your life in general and it's up to you to uh, place that um, time frame before you begin your reading. And with these five tarot decks that we have here, we have the option number one, number two, number three, number four and number five. Take a moment to choose your option and you may go directly to the reading. The timestamps are in the description box. All right, I hope you have a good one. And so for those of you who've chosen the option number one, this deck is called the Dreaming Way Tarot. And we're asking the question, what is my guided path going forward? What is my guided path going forward? And I'm just going to put back in the deck any cards that flip out at the moment and shuffle it a little longer until I'm ready, until I feel that it's right to bring out the cards that we need to hear um, for today. I feel also that when you, uh, when cards just flip out, sometimes they are, they have a message, sometimes they're bringing attention to something, but it's not necessarily the whole reading. I like to feel guided by the feeling that I have at a given moment in order to to display the cards, in order to choose the cards for you. And sometimes uh, this might mean that I choose cards that pop out, but uh, today I just don't feel that that is the case. So for those of you who've chosen the first option here, it's the Dreaming Way Tarot. And the question we're asking is, what is my guided path going forward? Now here I feel like what's important is to realize that any heartbreak or any kind of disappointment in love or in life that might one might have had previously um, is, is still taking up a, quite a bit of space in your life. And I feel here that what needs to happen is that there needs to be a pause uh, placed on that. There needs to be the focus shifted away from any kind of love situation that didn't work out where you may still be harboring some kind of disappointment or some kind of um, wish for things to work out. Also, if you are hoping that love works out for you in a particular way, in a way that really makes you... Um, feel more fulfilled then that is the wrong direction that you're looking at and uh, the cards here the way I'm reading them the way I see them is that if you have to let go of that disappointment that you have with regard to not having love the way you've you've wanted to work out or not having life the some kind of something that you were passionate about not really working out perhaps it's a relationship perhaps it's it's somebody or it could also be a hobby in some rare instance, but I feel here it's it's more about, you know, a kind of beat in your step that you're lacking now because of something that's occurred in the past. And the way the cards, uh, um, the way I'm reading the cards right now, it's almost as if it's saying, well, you know, if you were to let go of that, if you were not to concentrate on that anywhere more, if you were not to feel so disappointed about that anymore, what's going to happen is that you're going to feel some kind of relief. You're going to feel that things are a little bit easier for you. You're almost going to feel like the, the clouds have parted and a bit of the sun comes through. And even though daily things like chores or whatever responsibilities that you have may seem overwhelming at times, when you when you've let go of that disappointment that you might have had for whatever reason, then it's going to make more space in your life for you to feel uh, like there's some kind of relief, like there's some kind of lighter release, uh, some kind of ease that's come into your life as a result. Now, it's not going to solve all your problems. It's not going to take away everything Um you know, all the, the challenges that you might have. But what it will do is that it will give you a little bit more energy 
uh, to face the situation as it is right now. Now, I think here as well that, uh, you know, wherever your situation is, you don't need to really bring an end to it. It doesn't have to be the end of something. And when you put, an, if you decide to end it, it doesn't have to be that you throw out the baby with the bathwater. You know, you don't have to completely cut off your past or completely cut off that aspect of yourself. And I feel here that uh, these cards are saying, well, go back and look at what and where it is that you can actually salvage something from the past. So if it was a relationship and it's ended or you're thinking of ending it or things are not really working out the way it is, it's not just to say, okay, well, I'm going to end that now and I'm not going to um, be that person I was anymore in that relationship because there's something there to be salvaged. It's almost like it's saying, well, you know, you're not going to uh, just let go of everything that you were in the past because you may think that it's not working for you, but rather that you need to go back and look at the person that you were previously. You know, who have you been in, through your lifetime? What are the skills that you've had? What are the ways in which you've overcome challenges that you've had in your life? What are those special skills that you've developed? And how have you grown as an individual as you've gone through your life? And what's going to happen in that moment is that you're going to feel like you have something more to take with you. It's not like you are losing everything in this process. It's not like you need to give up everything in this process. Now, I feel that this can also apply to uh, furniture or something material. So if you are in a situation where there's a marriage that's ended, a relationship that's ended, and you're wondering how can you go ahead, well, I, I feel like, you know, don't leave behind the car, don't leave behind the furniture, don't leave behind something that belongs to you or that you feel um, entitled to in this situation, but rather go back and negotiate as far as that is concerned and go back and, and ask, well, you know, how is it that I'm going to have Oh, what I need to go ahead. You don't need to walk away empty-handed is the way in which I would read that. Now, I feel here also that um, as you go ahead, you know, there's not this kind of portrait of you any longer as being this polished person where everything's going according to plan and everything's working out. And I feel like there's a need to kind of give up a fairy tale version of yourself if you inhabit such a uh, such a belief and you need to kind of let go of that and understand that you are ready to be able to take on whatever's coming your way in this world and in this time and you can actually just you know get yourself prepared and armor yourself if need be be ready for what is coming and you've you have what you've learned you have the experience you have the the growth that you've gone through to you by your side and you can actually go ahead and you can be more aware at this time and you can, um, you know, you need to be a bit more um, discerning, I think, uh, but not just that. It feels to me like you need to be just a bit more streetwise as you go ahead now and as you find your way forward. I feel also that, uh, you know, there are some things that are going to matter less to you as you go ahead. So if you were this person who was very concentrated on your appearance or how people see you or something like that, this is going to be less uh, necessary for you as you go ahead. It's almost like you are going to understand a rougher version of yourself and a less polished version of yourself. And it's like you're willing to show the world that and show the world that this is who you really are. So, you know, it's almost as if this, it's like, you know, if you wear somebody who wore makeup a lot in your life, uh, it's almost like you perhaps starting a phase now where you won't be wake wearing that kind of ma much makeup. And that's just an example. That's a quite a um, kind of obvious example. But see how that applies to your life and where it applies to your life and how it applies to your life. And I think here that um, one of the things that comes from this, it's like you're not trying to appear to others in a way that pleases others, that there's not going to be that, you know, I'm going to do this because I want to be accepted. I'm going to do this because I need to feel included. I need to feel like I can, I'm keeping up with the Joneses. I need to feel like I'm actually uh, doing what others are doing and I'm in this game as well. But rather, I feel here you know, what's, what's going to happen is that... The, um, you're going to like forge your own identity and, and find your own path and be able to go ahead uh, almost uh, not alone, but you know, it's like you're venturing out on your own. 
And I think that one of the things that happens as a result of this is that you're not really, you don't really have the audience that you necessarily used to have. You don't necessarily have the people who would cheer you on and and feel happy for you or just show their appreciation of you. Um, because what's going to happen is that um, there's less of that. It's more like you need to feel really, really content with yourself and how you are going ahead. And that is what's most important right now. And as a result, the price to pay for that, the price to pay is that some people are going to fall away from your life or some um, people who were there serving a role for you, who were giving you this uh, kind of a idea that it's all okay the way you are, even though it hasn't been okay, uh, well, these people are going to kind of fall away now because they're no longer there to serve that role for you and you no longer need them uh, because you are now strengthening yourself to go on on your own. And the way in which to do that is to go back and look at what you've lost or go back and salvage what you've lost. And I feel here that, you know, you don't need to mourn those um, moments that you would have spent with people uh, which you are no longer going to be doing, but rather you can look forward to finding new people that resonate with you, new people who find you attractive as you are, as you're able to show yourself to the world. And this is going to be a very... Um, it's like almost going to be a very, um, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very raw process for you. It's going to be a very, um, you know, it's like the onions, the onion peel, peeling off and just, you know, you showing yourself to the world. So it's like, you're almost quite vulnerable. You're almost quite, uh, you know, um, leaving yourself to, to be open to society and seeing how they accept you or, or don't accept you. And I feel like the way you need to go forward is to just be yourself regardless of how others see you or how, whether others accept you or not. And that's a very important part of this. And I feel like it, for some of you, it has to do with your relatives or with your in-laws or something like that. Like it's it's important to do, it has to do with your in-laws or with people around you, like perhaps family or something like that. But it's the most important thing to take away from this is that it's important to move away from any kind of disappointment that you might have felt in your past and to be able to, you know, feel the relief that you feel as a result of not mourning any longer or not being hopeful any longer for something that's not happening. And then uh, just being able to, um, you know, reinvent yourself alongside salvaging what you might have left in the past and reinvent yourself as in showing a raw version of yourself, showing an, an unpolished version of yourself, showing a part of yourself that's more authentic or more real, a more sincere part of yourself as well. And I feel here that, uh, you know, whoever you're going to lose along the way, it's not that important. And it might be that you mourn that, it might be that you feel really sad about that, but I feel that it's not that important ultimately. Um, and it's okay to release some of these people it's okay to kind of um you know let go of people who no longer serve you in your life or no longer um can celebrate who you are or who you've become as you've gone ahead all right so that's my message for you um and that's uh that's the guidance that uh, that's being offered to you as you go ahead in your life. And I hope that has been helpful for you. Do let me know in the comment section if it has been. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. I'm wishing you much luck and many blessings to you all. All right. Bye for now. And so for those of you who have chosen the second option, we're using the Tower of the Spirit here. And we're asking the question, what is my guided path going forward? What is the advice that I have that is given to me, that is that I'm guided by as I go ahead. What am I supposed to do as I go ahead? Which is the direction that I'm supposed to take? And um, yeah, we are using it, the tarot cards today called Tarot of the Spirit. So for those of you who've chosen the option number two, we're using the Tower of the Spirit here. 
It's very interesting. A lot of love cards in the reverse position. And I would say that here the cards um, are referring to you investing your love somewhere where it's not recognized or it's not appreciated and pouring your love into the situation and it being wrapped up with a lot of sentimentality or sentimentalism as well as nostalgia. And it's almost as if as you go forward, you need to stop doing that. You need to stop actually uh, wasting your time um, in in a situation where you are giving so much of yourself for something, someone or something that cannot give that back to you. Now, this could be uh, one of your typical kind of uh, twin flame relationships where you are waiting endlessly for somebody to come to you. And I... I like how the, the author of this deck calls it a sacred chord. It's not a sacred chord in most situations. It's really uh, very much a, a situation where you are losing your time and your life and your energy, um, you know, and pouring it into something that's not really real. And ultimately, it's going to, um, you're going to get over it. And then you're going to realize that you've left quite a lot of your life behind and you haven't really found somebody who can appreciate you, love you and see you, recognize you, see you as your soul. And you may think that this person does or some this person does, but they don't actually, they haven't reciprocated. And it's not because they can't. It's not because they're unable to. It's not because the energy is not right. It's simply because they don't want to. And uh, so that is one of the scenarios. And for some of you who that doesn't resonate with, I would say that one of the other ways in which this a, a set of cards here could work is that there is this sense that um, there is something that you've invested in. There's something that you thought you loved. There's something that you've put all your energy behind. It could be a business as well. It could be a certain home or a certain place, a city, a town, um, it's some kind of endeavor that you put your heart behind and uh, because you've been nostalgic about it, because you had some memory of it or some uh, something something reminds you of that. So it might be that, you know, in a particular relationship, for instance, I use this as an example only, that you, uh, and you can see how it applies to you, that you put all your energy behind a particular relationship because you fought really hard to be in that relationship and you just keep pouring into that relationship. You know, the card here, the flood, it talks about how you keep pouring, but it's to no avail because what's actually happening is it's not recognized, it's not reciprocated, it's not even received. And it's saying that you're here, that you need to actually stop doing this. Now, as I said, it could apply to uh, beyond a relationship. It could be applied to a hobby. It could be apply to a particular business or endeavor, a creative endeavor, where you've put a lot of your energy behind it, but it hasn't actually taken off. It's as if, you know, the love is not reciprocated. It's as if you've put all your energy into this and you're pouring still time and energy into it, but nobody's there to receive it or very few, there's very little recognition of it. And uh, it's talking about have, being able to have the courage to walk away from it and or having the courage to stand up for yourself and be a little bit defensive because you need to be able to defend yourself. You know, not being defensive because it's a symptom of you hiding yourself from the reality of it, but being defensive as in protecting yourself from this, from the lack of recognition from the uh, being exposed in this particular way or allowing yourself to be vulnerable in this particular way and not being um, not having the love reciprocated not being seen I think the big theme here for this this these cards as they uh, they are is that you are not being seen you're not being recognized you don't you're not being appreciated in the way that you need to be and the way that you need to go ahead is to be able to have courage to go ahead, as the card here says it. But it also means that you need to be able to tear yourself away from whatever emotionalism that helps you to hang on to a particular situation. So I feel here that there's a lot of nostalgia, a lot of sentiment, uh, sentimentality, or rather, what is the word, uh, sentiment that actually holds you to a particular situation. And if you had to cut away the emotion, if you had to stop being emotional, but actually just look at it for what it's worth, 
for what its value is, then you'll be able to cut yourself away from it quite quickly. And it's almost like you need to be take quite a stance. You need to be really decisive here as you go ahead. And that is what you're being guided to do, to be really decisive, to be really, um, you know, um, quite fiery in the way you, you, you move ahead. There's all this water energy here, and then there's this fire energy. It's asking you to stop stop strip yourself away from all this water energy because this water energy is not bringing healing it's not bringing goodness in the world it's not bringing goodness in your life it's almost like a stagnant lake that it, where you know the the water is becoming putrid and it's like what they're saying is well you need to cut yourself away from that and tear open a new path for yourself and go ahead with this fiery in this fiery nature and be able to forge a new path for yourself but they're saying well first be a bit more defensive protect yourself because it's almost as if that it's almost as if it shows me here that you will receive resistance if you were to do that now this resistance that you may face may be something that's conjured in your own mind maybe it's how you see the situation or how you believe the situation to be and you justifiably believe that that is the case that if you decide to leave you will receive some resistance or that you will have difficulty it will be not so easy and so i think this is the reason that perhaps you are guided here to be um, a little bit defensive where you really stand up for yourself and you're really saying well you know I'm not going to tolerate any more of this and I'm just going to go on with my life and I'm not going to give any more in this situation because ultimately whatever I'm giving right now it's almost poisoning the situation and poisoning me in the same vein and that's it's not helping the other party or you or if it's your hobby or some kind of endeavor it's not helping that either necessarily. It may appear that it's helping. It may look like it's helping. Your intentions may be to actually help. But what's actually happening here is that there isn't anything being helped. What's actually happening is that you're hurting yourself in the process as you go along. And so what you need to do is be able to cut yourself away from it and really say, okay, well, I'm taking a stand here. I'm going to choose something that's healthier for me. And I'm going to defend myself. I'm actually going to look after myself as I go ahead here. And I feel as you do that, what actually happens is that it's like all your wishes come true. But it's not like, you know, at this point, you've given up on the idea that you're actually going to try to be with that one person or you're going to you know you're trying to look for that one particular thing that's going to make you happy because what's actually happening at this moment is that you're pouring yourself and you're pouring your energy into something that's not possible or something that's not going to happen and uh, I'm sure most of you don't really like what I'm saying right now and uh, but you know that's the reality of it and that's the the situation and so you know you can't really hide away from it yes you can leave a dislike on this video and move on but you are still in that situation where you need to break away from whatever it is that's actually hurting you so at some point whether you realize it now as you're listening to this message or if you realize it later you are going to need to 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 realize because it's hurting you at the moment. It's it's hurting you. It's poisoning you. It's bad for you. You know. And I think that here you need to actually um, like have a reality check. Almost. I know that this message sounds really harsh, but I I don't mean it in a harsh way. What I'm trying to say is that you really need to you know, wake up to this reality of what's actually going on and you need to defend yourself and you need to put yourself first and you need to protect yourself because you've got all this love to give, you know, there's all this love that you're giving right now and it's not being appreciated wherever you're giving it to. So this, you know, if this doesn't, this is not to do with another partner or a love relationship, then it could be that you're doing this in your work or it could be that you're doing it in your, yeah, in your work environment or perhaps it's something to do with you're with family, uh, perhaps it's something where you're giving all the time to your family and that's where the nostalgia comes in. And um, But there's something here where it's not a healthy bond that you have and you are investing much more on this than anyone else in the situation is. And what it's saying to you more than anything is if you have the courage to stand up for yourself and you can actually know what is good for you because I think the first thing to do is to be ident able to identify what is good for, for you what is the thing that you need at this moment what is the thing that's going to be okay for you or good for you or feed you you know what's going to be good for you what's going to be wholesome for you and I think once you have 
you're able to identify that, then you it's natural for you to be able to defend yourself from whatever is not going to be good for you. And I see here that you know you have the the nine of cups or the equivalent of the nine of cups in this in this deck, and here you are in a situation where you can simply have all your dreams come true. Now, I would advise you not to say, well, you know, my dreams are only going to come true if I'm with that person or in this environment or if this business takes off the ground or if that happens. You know, don't place any conditions on it. Ultimately, the feeling that you're going to have at the end of this is that of wholesomeness and feeling well and feeling protected and feeling happy, feeling joy, feeling bliss, feeling satisfaction, feeling fulfillment. And there's you know, not many feelings that are better than the, those feelings. And I think that all you have to do here is not constantly give to something that's not feeding you and just be able to cut that and be able to defend yourself against it. And then that come, the reality is that you're fed with beauty and happiness and joy and a, such a degree of satisfaction that only you can give yourself. It's like this, you suddenly become empowered overnight and you feel like an amazing sense of being able to do something. It's such a freedom that you have as a result. And so I think that, well, that is your message, you know, and your guided path going forward is to actually protect yourself, to not give too much of yourself, to not uh, pour all your love into something else, to not, um, you know, saturate that situation any further, to be able to remove yourself from it, defend yourself, stand your ground, and then Allow the happiness to come to you and don't think of happiness as coming in a particular package or only being that you'll only be happy if you have this, this, and that. You know, you need to actually allow yourself to feel happiness that will come to you from all different directions if only you could give it a chance. You know, it's almost like it's raining down on you the happiness, but you need to be able to give it a chance to be able to do that. And that is, and um, I mean, I feel like the, the outcome here or where you're being guided to is actually so beautiful you know it's really beautiful this this card and this message but I don't know if you were able to come beyond a situation where you are not being appreciated as much as you you would like to be or you deserve to be rather and so that's really up to you to see how you feel about that and whether that resonates to you and whether you're able to do that take a moment think about it see how you feel about it, it takes some weeks you know to think about it and see how you feel about it and then make a decision because this card here this um yeah it talks about really being decisive really making a decision really going ahead and taking a stance this you know having the courage um this seven of wands um or the seven of fire having the courage to actually take an action and so it's it's something that you really need to be able to do and you know this card here very interestingly uh the the two of water it talks about a sacred bond and you know a bond that is uh, in this reverse position, it's it's no longer sacred. It's no longer in a you know. It's no longer feeding you. It's no longer able to give you anything. Actually, it takes away from you more than it can give you. So um, yeah, I hope that you are able to receive some guidance from this message and that you're able to help yourself as you go along and uh, do what's right for you. You know, and um, I know that I've I've given you the the full gambit of this message. But for some of you, it may resonate uh, in quite a slight way. You know, it's not such a big deal. It's okay for you to walk away from the situation. It's okay for you to move away from this. But I've uh, given the message in a way that it also is helpful for those that are in extreme situations or find themselves unable to walk away or find themselves unable to move away from this. People who are, are you know, really... Um, uh, like kind of in a fantasy world and and so I think that if you feel that your situation is not so hectic and not so um destructive for you then don't worry about it just go on go on and and take the guidance from these cards from these cards as they're given all right so I'm wishing you many blessings and much love on your path and uh, may you have all that you deserve and all that you um all that you're worth all right many blessings to you all And so for those of you who've chosen the option number three, we're using the Tower of the Sacred Feminine. And we're asking the question, what is my guided path going forward?
And so for those of you who've chosen the option number three, this is the Tarot of the Sacred Feminine. And we're asking the question, what is my guided path going forward? And the cards that we have are really quite interesting here because it shows that um, what you've come from and where you're headed to is is quite an in, it's quite interesting the way in which it's it's displayed, and I feel here that you know you, there might have been at some point um, some kind of unsettled feeling or some kind of disruption in your life, which might have led you to kind of feel as if things can't be the way you want them to be, or um, that you needed to. Uh, create some kind of ending in your life to, so that you can go along in a way that will help you to to be um, happier, I guess. And I feel here that this might have had something to do with the love relationship and that it is, it's as if, um, uh, you know, th there's this, a love relationship that didn't work out the way it needed to. Or it could be a marriage. It could be a marriage or some kind of uh, permanent, more permanent relationship or something where you are looking at that person to fulfill the role of um, of a husband or wife or some kind of uh, long-term partnership. And it feels here like it's as if there's a need to retrace steps as far as that relationship is concerned. There's a need to do things a bit differently because something that you might have been holding up high, something that you might have been um, almost like counting on has fallen down. It's like tumbled down and it's, it's, it's broken and it's no longer something that you can hold your head up high to. And so there might have been some kind of infidelity in the relationship or there might have been something where whatever it is that you've wanted from this person, it's actually, you found out that you, you're you getting more than you've bargained for. You're getting more that you bargained for, but not in a good way. And as a result, there's this question of whether you be, you stay in this relationship or whether you leave the relationship. Now, I think that ultimately you're being guided to work towards a part of yourself which is more um more happy or just having true happiness having um really a kind of fulfillment in your life and these cards here show me that in order for you to do that you need to be able to walk past uh, that part of you, which is thinking about beginnings or endings, which is trying to intuit what's going on in that relationship, which is trying to understand using uh, psychic forces what is actually happening in that situation. And you need to be able to let go of that and just be able to work beyond that. Now, I feel also here that one of the ways in which you can do that is by... Um, actually embarking upon a path where you can uh, look at things in a more clearer light as as opposed to looking at that situation uh, as your focus. And it's almost like it's saying, well, if you want to go along the healing arts, if you want to go along um, the path of learning to um, to be a psychic or learning to do work as healer or learning to work as a high priestess, then so that is something that you need to, to consider quite clearly and quite carefully. But when you've done it, you need to put your, all of your yourself into it. You can't actually decide that you're going to do it half-heartedly. And there's this kind of relationship or something that you've come out of, something where it's disappointed you, this is something that you need to be able to put behind you. You can't take it with you. And you can't begin the course or the way of being um, a high priestess by, or, or whatever it is, like becoming more intuitive, becoming more psychic, just becoming more discerning perhaps. Um, you can't go on this path if you always have in focus at the corner of your eye that relationship. Now, for those of you who are not in a love relationship and you're wondering what if, what is this message about, There might have been a situation where things haven't really worked out the way they've needed to. So something came tumbling down, something didn't go according to plan. And uh, with that, there was a sense of um, having some kind of disconnection from the divine or feeling disconnected from some people. But with it came some degree of disconnection. And um, it feels here like th there is a, f 
um, a notion of wanting to escape. There's this notion of wanting to leave it behind or that maybe you haven't really left it behind as, as yet or maybe you haven't turned your back on it but you think the solution is to turn your back on it or you think the solution is to cut it away and um, according to this card it's, it's uh, these cards it doesn't seem as if that's the case it feels more like you need to recognize that um, yeah there has been a situation that hasn't really gone according to plan maybe there's something came tumbling down the kind of images I get is like a vase or some kind of urn at the top of the shelf that comes tumbling down or perhaps like um, you know something getting washed away something uh, getting washed away or some kind of earthquake uh, something like this you know this, this is the kind of images that I'm getting when I when I speak about this and I feel like you know something happened here that really disrupted your life ultimately or disappointed you caused your disappointment it, it mostly up, uh, upsetted your life or it may be that it caused some kind of uh, turbulence in your life and as a result you find yourself in a, at, a, at a like a juncture almost where you're thinking maybe I should end this maybe I should walk away from this maybe you know your your home was burned or your home was flooded and you're thinking well shall I walk away from this or shall I go in um you know shall I go in a different direction or or shall I stay here and clean this up and it's almost like uh, the cards here are saying well you know you've turned to the psychics you've turned to the oracle for guidance as to how you should go about with this but it's saying well you know that isn't necessarily the path the path here is has more to do with you just tapping into and finding your joy and finding your happiness which you have lost along the way and it's important to be able to feel that it's important to be able to actually understand what it means to you or for you to be able to be happy again and i feel when i when the talk it's talking about the path going forward um well the question was what is your path going forward and so i think here the answer to that question is simply that you need to focus on on yourself as you go ahead so that you can tap into that joy again and once you have that joy once you have that with you and you're able to feel happy again you're able to smile you're able to laugh you able to have this lightness of being in you then what's going to happen is that you can look back at the situation and you can look at a path at which you can further develop your intuition um it's also you know you could also begin that already you could further uh, develop your intuition you could further develop your healing abilities or work in a capacity where you bring goodness to others uh you're healing others in some capacity you're bringing well-being to others and recognize also that when you're doing that you're doing it because you're seeing their higher self and you're seeing what their soul demands and not what uh is instituted uh by uh, protocol or some kind of uh, legislation or something like that okay but the thing is that uh, here it's like you say well you can go that path but the first thing that you need to do is recognize what it feels like what it means to feel joy what it what does it mean to actually tap into yourself to feel what is your own happiness and once you've done that you can go back on your path and you can actually uh, make a decision and I feel like here is what you need to that's what you need to do you need to be able to make that decision and in order to make that decision you need to do it from a place of happiness and and wellness and well-being and along the way as you go about making that decision yes you can bark upon a path where you may be able to bring healing to to someone or something yes you may bring an ending to something but you can't do it from this perspective you can't do it from a from where you are right now because you're not going to be making the right decisions and you're not going to be doing it for the right reasons and you're not going to be doing something that's necessarily good for you and i think here also there's a sense that there is a relationship that can be revisited in the future once you have walk this path so it's it's a really interesting reading uh this third option i feel like it's it's very uh it's it's very wise in a way you know and it's, it's really talking about how you can walk away from the rumblings of your life or perhaps the rumblings of your life has led you to this place where you have needed to st strip away yourself from everything else in order to get back down to basics to that path uh, to that part of you where there is only joy where there is only happiness and there is only well-being and so i think here that uh, that is that message you know and i'm not sure if you are able to grasp that or you're able to actually you know how to 
you're going to be able to grasp that. I think ultimately, if you set the intention for it, or if you just, yeah, if you set the intention for it, you just say, you know, I'm going to do this, that it will be the case and you will be okay in it. I think also that uh, you, once you find that way, once you find that happiness in you, things kind of uh, align themselves and you have an idea of how you can go ahead and you don't need the guidance from anyone else you don't need some somebody telling you how you need to do things whether it's a relationship a partner or whether it's uh, some kind of psychic guidance or whether it's anything else you don't need that and one of the things that seems to be a problem as far as um was well, not a problem but rather it stands in the way of you actually getting to where you need to go to, is seeking guidance. So I don't know if you're seeking guidance at many places or how you are um, looking for this guidance, but it's almost like this guidance needs to come from within you. It needs to come from inside of you. And so hearing it from somebody else is not necessarily going to be the right thing. Or even if you tell yourself, well, you know, I've heard that, I've got the information, it's not necessarily the same as, uh, well, it's, it's quite different actually from from going in and, and feeling that it's almost like you go inside yourself and you're taking it outside of you like this ribbon that you're pulling out from inside of you and it's all about that joy it's all about the basics but what is it that you need at a very very basic level and and stripping away everything else as i mentioned and actually just focusing on that and i think from there come the answers and from there everything is in perspective and i think that all these cards, you know, this is quite an important reading in these um, mostly major arcana cards. The, it has quite a, it's quite an important role for you. It's almost like uh, the, in many ways, the ending of, of who you've been and the beginning of something new. And, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, that you have to end things on a physical level with a partnership or in a, in, as far as um, a particular relationship is concerned. It could be a business relationship. It could be a work relationship, something like this. It doesn't mean that there needs to be an ending. There is no cutoff that's needed here. It's almost like you're standing at a pedestal uh, and looking back at your life and now you're saying, okay, well, I've come this far and I'm going to give myself the peace and the joy that I need in my life. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like I, I struggled a little bit to get that message out to you, uh, largely because I feel like I wasn't articulate enough. And also because the energy or the information didn't come to me all at once. It's like I needed to channel it to you. So it was, uh, yeah, so it was a little bit different from how I would normally read. Uh, and I think it's also, yeah, it's also a powerful reading because there's all these major arcana cards here and this, uh, it's a great moment in your life to be able to take that step and I hope that some of what I've said resonates with you and that you can actually take something away from this reading and I'm wishing you many blessings as you go along in your path. All the best. So for those of you who've chosen the fourth option here, this is the Herbal Tarot. And we're asking, what is my guided path going forward? What is my guided path? How am I guided to go ahead on this at this time? And so for those of you who've chosen the fourth option, we've uh, used the herbal tarot and we're we asking the question again, what is my guided path going forward? Now I feel here that these cards are quite self-explanatory and I love the herbal um, influences uh, for each card. So I think here that the overriding issue is that there's lack of satisfaction about about your finances, about uh, your work, about your career, about how things are moving ahead in terms of your work and your career. Perhaps you're not receiving the the appreciation or the recognition or the um, or the promotions or the you perhaps you're not really progressing in your work as the, in the way that you've needed to. And I think that um, 
you know, you, there's been a hope that you can that you can progress, and you, there's been faith as far as that is concerned. You've had faith that you will progress, but there's almost a sense here that this um, this hope is waning at this moment, and it's almost like you know you've been carrying quite a lot, uh, quite a load in order to to get there. It's like it's like the work doesn't give you much satisfaction anymore, and so I think here that what you need to do is just be able to walk away from it. You need to be able to gently, softly walk away from it. And, you know, Verven uh, here for this um, Six of Swords card, it's a very gentle energy, you know. It's very elegant, very graceful energy. And I think that uh, the way in which you walk away from it is not by, you know, just cutting cords or closing down the business or resigning from your work, but rather that, just gently, gracefully, allow yourself to be led away. And I think that if you are open to that and you're open to seeing how that could happen, that you're going to find that he, there are going to be opportunities that come your way and there are going to be opportunities that are quite lucrative. Now, the goals that you had that led you to be where you are right now or in the current work that you are in right now is not something that you need to forsake because you are moving ahead or moving away or allowing yourself to be gently or gracefully led away. But rather, you are still able to uh, to continue with that, to work with that, because whatever you're going to be doing next, which is going to be providing you more uh, income and more satisfaction, just generally, you're just going to be recognized more. It could also be that you're working with people in a different way, or you're working with people, different people, and it gives you some kind of um, recognition or understanding of yourself that you didn't have before. And you are still going to be able to reach the goal that you need to go to uh, without um, without actually you know, changing your path. So it's almost as if, in these cards, when I read these cards, if I have to read them for somebody, I would think that somebody has been working, they've been working perhaps traditionally, or they've been working maybe not traditionally, maybe they've created one of their hobbies, uh, they've created one of their their work, some of their work into a hobby. And here it's almost like it's saying, well, you know, maybe that's not working out so well right now, so why don't you just leave that for the moment and go back to the work that you had been doing previously or some other kind of work where you get a different opportunity. And it doesn't mean that you can't continue with your hobbies because you're going to reach that goal anyway. It's going to allow you the growth, the development, the skills, um, um, you know, you're going to be able to build the skills as you, you do the, the other job and it's still going to lead you to where you need to go to. And it might not look that way, but ultimately where you want to go to requires you to have these other skills and that's why you need to do that at the moment. And, you know, it can also work in the opposite way. It could also work alternatively that uh, you have been uh, doing a regular job and you've been working nine to five and it's become really oppressive, really hard for you to do so. And so you've decided to gently walk away from it and to follow a path that offers you a bit more fulfillment. And you find uh, yourself a uh, upon a venture, some kind of business venture, and you've decided to go in partnership with some other, two other people or something like this, and this is lucrative for you, and you make some money. And ultimately, you find yourself at a place where you have walked away from a traditional structure, but you find yourself quite traditional in the fact that you are doing things in a way that you, were, um, you hadn't necessarily thought you'd do it in that way. Ultimately, wherever you whatever you do however you choose to do this uh the end product is you feeling like you are you belong somewhere uh you're recognized that you are part of something that's greater that you are building block for something that's greater that you are recognized building block for something that's greater and that you are fulfilling a purpose here and I feel that also your finances improve as you you allow yourself to be gently led away from uh, what it what it is that you're currently doing that's causing you to feel tired to feel disengaged to feel not as inspired as you might have been earlier on and uh, just allowing yourself to be to work walk away uh, more gently and with a lot more ease than you might have done uh, in the past. You know, the cardio of Irvine, um has quite a floaty energy. And 
the sage. The sage is really something that where you've graduated. It's you know you've. It's a much more grounded energy, and you will find that you actually are at the space that you want to be at. It's like your goals are fulfilled once you are at this stage, whereas you would never have thought that that is how you would go about fulfilling your goals. And so it's it's almost as if you need to take this path, you need to divert a bit, you need to go in a different direction for a bit in order to be able to reach your goals. And ultimately, where you find yourself is going to make you feel more settled, like you belong, as I've mentioned already. And it will make you feel like, like this is where you need to be. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it there for you. I hope that this message has resonated and that it actually gives you what you need to make the decisions that you need to do, make as you go ahead. And I wish you many blessings on your path. Thank you. And for those of you who've chosen the last option here, the fifth option, I'm using the Hobbit Tarot, and we're asking the question, what is my guided path going forward? Yes, we're asking, um, what is my guided path going forward? And what is the direction that I need to go in, and how can I go about... Uh, going ahead in a way that brings me what I desire in my life, what I what I what is best for me in my life. So for this is the fifth option that we're using the hub terror and I feel here that there's so much of anguish here that you've experienced in your life or that you're currently experiencing it just feels like you know you're really lost you're really not sure you're really indecisive you're really afraid um you you know you have some unfounded fears but also some fears that are quite justifiable and it's as if, you know, you should have been rewarded by now. You should have had what it is that is due to you. And it's almost as if you feel kind of uh, let down or disappointed or kind of, you know, yeah, disappointed from from life and from what the universe or, or life or society, whatever, should offer you. And um, it feels like, you know, you're still searching for what is due to you. And it's like it's somehow not within your reach it's almost like it's a mirage you know it's almost like your life as you imagined it to be is it's like a mirage it's like it's almost there but it's not and then as you search for it you can't you know you can't find it and then what also gives me the feeling of that is that there's a sense here with um with this card um the the seven of swords that you are needing to defend yourself from something or you're needing to you know you're afraid of something you're trying to protect yourself from something and it isn't actually there so you know you might be afraid of something like riots or you might be afraid of, of floods or fire or war or something like this but it isn't actually there and you don't need to be afraid of that because that isn't going to be what um, crosses your path and so there's this unfounded fear that you have for life and it's not going to affect you you don't have to worry it's not going to um, be the way you expect it to be it's going to be quite harmonious but there's also the sense here that there's such a great degree of indecision in your life. You're just not sure which stance to take. You're torn between perhaps two options or maybe more. And you're not really sure of how to go about doing this. And I would say that it's not the right time to make a decision. And that's why you haven't been able to make a decision. And that the first thing that you need to do is kind of work away these fears that you have. Because if you work away these fears, what you're going to find is that there's another option that comes up. And that is the right option for you. That is the path forward that you need to go on. Um, so it's almost like, you know, you've been looking at A and B and you've been saying, well, C is out of the, not, not an option because it's too dangerous or it's not going to be good for me. It's not going to be good for my, my kids or it's not going to be good for my husband. And it's going to be really destructive for me for whatever reason. And 
then you because you've walk, worked away this fear because you've come over your kind of phobia or your anger or your your distrust about a particular situation then that's going to allow c to also be an option and you're going to find that c is a far more lucrative option also for the long term even though you may not think it's a lucrative option for the long term so i feel here that this unfounded fears need to fall away and once they you've done that that you can go forward and um you know, there's this other question here as well. It's almost, it feels like uh, you haven't been rewarded financially. You haven't been rewarded for your skills, for your for your work, for your input. You haven't been uh, graced by the wealth or the, the riches that is due to you. And there's this feeling that I have here that you feel that you haven't actually gotten what you need. And maybe you are uh, finding it difficult as a result. Maybe you are in a situation where you're just managing because you haven't been able to actually um, have enough funds or you, you just don't have enough resources to be able to do what you need to do. And I feel that that is just a temporary situation. It's just what you're feeling right now. And if you were to actually consider this option C or this other option that you're afraid of considering, you know, that it might work out well for you. I also feel here that, you know, that it, it, it doesn't have to be with regard to, it could be like property. It could be with regard to your country. It could be with regard to uh, your work it could be with regard to an opportunity you know maybe it's that you are thinking that you know the way you go ahead in terms of your career is only a or b and then you find that c is an option and perhaps c is something that you did many many years ago but you didn't think you would be good at it anymore you didn't think you could do it but now is the time where you are mature enough to be able to do it. And now is the time where you can actually embark upon that and it's okay to actually try that out. And it's advised that you try that out. It's advised that you give it a try. It's advised that you you actually put your, your, your heart and your soul behind it and it's going to help you to move that way. Now, I feel here there's also a sense that you feel trapped or you feel um, locked up locked away somehow like you your hands are tied it's, it's as if there's a sense of disempowerment here that exists um but it doesn't need to because the way i read these cards i feel like you are quite empowered you you have a lot going for you you can do so much and you're just selling yourself short or you just don't recognize how amazing you really are and how much you really have going for you and i feel here that ultimately if you if you follow the path where you're able to get rid of some of your fears recognize what some of your fears are at least begin to identify what they are and then work away at them what's going to happen is that as you do so you're going to find that things come into focus a little bit more uh, it's like slowly draws into focus and as you do that you're going to find that you aren't really disempowered that you can actually just walk on move on in your life and you can actually create or circumstances that fit you and fit you really well fit you like a glove and make things perfect for you make things beautiful for you and I feel like at the end of this all there's a sense of love now it might be that you actually meet love you meet somebody who's going to love you when you've made these changes in your life and you've actually uh, brought yourself to a place where you feel more empowered and more good in yourself better in yourself you know you feel more beautiful in yourself and i feel that there is a chance for love uh, when you are at this stage and it's almost as if love is waiting to come into your life and it's waiting for you to make these changes so you can meet love halfway and but there's then there's a stubbornness regarding that there's a stubbornness about making those changes because you feel disempowered you feel like like the victim you know you feel like you know there's something that could attack you or that you can't go ahead as a result and um, if you can just wash away those emotions wash away those feelings then what you're going to find is that you're going to encounter true love and i feel that for some of you it might not be a, a partner it might not be love in this way perhaps you are already with somebody that you love but for uh, for others this could be that you are in resonance with your soul you come into resonance with your soul and as you've done that you just feel like you have like you are in union with yourself and it feels like a like you like two parts of peas, parts of a, a pea, you know, that have kind of closed to, together, like a pea pod that is now closing together and you feel whole again. And you feel like, I don't know, like you just 
feel empowered and embodied by something and it just feels like the right moment there's a great degree of soul fulfillment that comes along with it and uh like if you if you were to go ahead as you go ahead right now if you were to actually uh not consider not focus too much on your indecision or way what you need to do and rather uh, focus on um, melting away some of the fears that you may have regarding that and not concentrating that much about the fact that you actually are not necessarily well rewarded for your endeavors but rather concentrate on how you can remove the chains those invisible chains that keep you locked into a particular situation then if you are able to do that then ultimately you kind of find true resonance either with a partner or with yourself with your soul and it could also be that you feel that way with a community or with a, uh, your society with the world that you're in and i feel it's a very uh this all the from all this anguish comes you know it right you rise it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes from all this hardship difficulty anguish there comes something better and i really feel it on in this um selection of cards here in the fifth option that there's more of a feeling of anguish or difficulty than there has been with uh, any of the other decks that i've read here yes there has been difficulty uh, for some of the other options but here there's like a true feeling of anguish like you're really hurting from whatever has happened and i um i behoove you to actually take some action in this regard and just really look after yourself really take care of whatever is holding you back whatever you might have thought are your defenses that are you know protecting you but actually they're holding you back so that you actually can continue in a way that is truly fruitful for you all right so i'm going to leave it at that i hope that that message has helped you i wish you really well on your path and i wish you um really fruitful and productive time as you go ahead and good luck with whatever it is that you need to do for yourself right now and i wish you all many many blessings thank you for coming by today and um blessings abound from kismet rising